This video is on naming uh, the compounds that are in the alcohols chapter. So our aims for this video are to be able to name alcohols, aldehydes, ketones and carboxylic acids. So first we're going to start with naming alcohols and the two things you've got to really think about when you're naming alcohols is um, the, ch the carbon chain and um, the where the OH is and how many of them are there. So let's take the following alcohol. So as we learnt in Chem 1, the first thing we've got to do is look for the longest carbon chain. You can see that that is three carbons long, one, two, three, or one, two, three, if you like. So the name of this carbon is going to be based on um, prop. Then you've got to think about whether there's anything coming off that carbon chain that isn't an OH group. And you can see there is, there's a methyl group coming off the second carbon along. Now we call this a second carbon based on the fact that the OH group is on the first carbon. We always name where the OH group is first. And we call this prop an one ol. So the ol comes from the fact it's an alcohol and the one comes from the fact on the first carbon. We'll then name anything else. So the methyl group is on the second carbon, so we'll call this two methyl propan one ol. If we look at another example, if I just delete these first, where we've got more than one alcohol group. So for example, this following alcohol. So this one, we've got four carbons the longest chain. So that is um, but an, and then we've got two OH groups, one on the second carbon and one on the third carbon. So we put a dash, we put where the OH groups are, so two, three, and then diol. So we follow the same rules as before with the numbers of the different groups. So there's one OH group, we don't put anything. If there's two, it's di, three, tri, and four, tetra. We put where they are in the middle of the, um, of the name. Now I'm going to show you how to name aldehyde. So aldehydes are uh, compounds with a CHO group on the end. So for example, the following compound. And with aldehydes, instead of having ol on the end of the name, like you do with alcohols, we have al on the name, end of the name. So basically what you do is look at the longest carbon chain and then put al on the end. So you've got one, two, three in the longest carbon chain. So this is propan al. Now there's no need to put propan one al or anything like that because the fact it's an aldehyde means that this aldehyde group has to be on the end of the carbon chain. So there's nowhere else that the aldehyde group could be other than on the first carbon, if you like. Although, in this case, it looks like it's on the third carbon, but we say this is the first carbon. If, however, you have something coming off the carbon chain, so for example this, so there's a aldehyde, and you can see the longest chain is four carbons in the middle, so that is going to be but. It's an aldehyde because you've got this group here, this C double bond O H group, so that's going to be butanal. And then we base this uh, methyl group on the fact that this carbon has to be our first carbon because that's where the aldehyde group is. So we number from that carbon, and so you can see the methyl group is on the third carbon long. So it's three methyl butanal. Now we're going to name ketones. Now with ketones, that's where you have a cetyl bond O that, is, that has got carbon groups on either side. It doesn't matter how long those carbon groups are, but um, there we are. So for this first uh, one we're going to name, you can see it's a straight chain ketone, so there's nothing coming off the chain other than the ketone group. And in this case, you do have to say where 
the door bond O is. Um, and in this case, you can see it's on the second carbon along. There are four carbons in the chain, so we've got but. And if it's a ketone, you have own on the end. So it would be butanone, but the fact it's on the second carbon means it, it's butan two own. Now actually, for a ketone with four carbons, the ketone group can only be on the second carbon, because if it's on the end carbon, then it would be an aldehyde. So actually, this you could call this butanone and, not, and still not have ambiguity. If you have something like following instead, so... So we've got a methyl group on the chain as well now. As with before, with the aldehyde, you name the ketone group first. You always name the functional group of the compound first in terms of the number of the carbon that's on, and then you should say where the methyl group is. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six carbons in the carbon chain. So this is going to be hex. In the ketone group is on the one, two, third carbon along, so it's hexan. 3 own, and then the methyl group, based on the fact this is the third carbon, is on the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th carbon along. So it's 5 methyl hexan, hexan 3 own. Finally, we're going to name carboxylic acids. Now, again, carboxylic acids um, you can um, only have the carboxylic acid on the end of the molecule. So, for example, this one here. And with the carboxylic acid, you've got a seal bondo um, OH group. Um, that is the functional group for carboxylic acid, that. So if you see that, it's a carboxylic acid. And first, you name the number of carbons in the chain. You've got three there, so it's going to be prop. Um, and for a carboxylic acid, the ending is propanoic acid. So what do you do if there's more than... There's different groups coming off the chain? Well, if I just... Delete that. And draw another one. So we'll have So as with before, where the functional group is is your first carbon. So this is your first carbon, second carbon, third carbon, fourth carbon, fifth carbon. There's five in the longest chain. So that's going to be pent. And it's going to be anoic acid. And then you name the methyl group that you haven't named yet based on the fact that this is your first carbon. So it's on the third carbon long. So it'll be three methyl pent anoic acid. You could also have two carboxylic acids group in the chain one on each end. And if you have that, then you'll name it in the following way. So you could have this. Sorry. In this case, again, you've got four carbons in the longest chain. So it's going to be but, butan, and then the carboxylic acid groups on the first and fourth carbon. So it'll be butan, one, four, and then dioic acid. And actually, I made a small mistake here because if you've got... In, with before the numbers, if you've got a consonant and a consonant after the numbers, then actually this will be butane one four dioic acid. You only miss off that e if um, the letter afterwards is not a consonant. So if you've got a consonant here and a vowel over here, then you'll leave it as butan. If you've got a consonant over here, then you'll put an e on the end. So basically, the rule is the Consonant shouldn't follow a consonant, and a vowel shouldn't follow a vowel. You should always have a consonant, then a vowel, or a vowel, then a consonant. So that's just a subtle change you have to make to the name and be aware of that. I can't imagine I'll ask you to name any um, 
dicarboxylic acids, but if they do, then that's how you'll go about naming it. If you have any questions, then please don't hesitate to ask by asking via email.